There is a Buddhist view that um, only things eternal are of value, or at least if it is a good Buddhist view, it's nonetheless still not valid in as far as the transitory things can lead to the eternal. You know, your practice now can help you towards enlightenment. You won't practice eternally the transitory, but it is of value. There's another possibly pseudo-Buddhist view that the self is um, a fiction. Uh, because you can't locate yourself, you can't say, here is me. You know, you can say, here is my body, but where's the my, where's the me? Um, but the fact that you can't locate something doesn't mean to say it doesn't exist. And the spiritual may not be something that the senses, the physical body, and so on, and even the mind can relate to or be sensitive to. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I mean, things that are very far off and don't happen to shine with light or give off radio signals may not be detectable by me. It doesn't mean they don't exist. Similarly with pain. I can have a pain. I'm pretty clear it's coming from, say, my foot. Um, but if I close my eyes and look at the pain, I can't actually say where the pain is being experienced. I only sort of know it is in my foot. I can't see the pain. I can visualize the foot and there being a fault with it. Because I'm in pain, and the pain is registering as in my foot. But I can't see pain. I can feel it, and I'm not at all clear how I'm clear if I just shut my eyes and feel the pain in part of the body, but I know its location. I can't see the pain, but I can feel it. It's still there. Now, if for some reason I can't feel the pain, for instance, I've been drugged in some way, uh, anaesthetized, that doesn't mean to say the damage is not still there. And it's still a problem to the body, in that the body's functioning may be uh, handicapped accordingly. So things don't have to be eternal or detectable to be important to us. In that sense, a philosophical view that says, well, if nobody's experiencing something, it doesn't exist, is not true. It simply means that they're not experiencing it. Its existence is still there in the objective sense. And although you may not be experiencing it at the minute, if you walk into it, you may know it's there very much, and uh, you have to take that into account. While we're in the sort of area of Buddhist thinking, the object of life is not to remove suffering. Suffering is there as a blessing that we might dis help. It. it helps us as regards discerning between good and evil. That we choose the good and avoid the evil and are trained for the kingdom of heaven and trained also to make this life better too. We avoid evil, that which causes suffering. That doesn't mean to say we see suffering as an evil. We don't wish to suffer from suffering. But we're glad it's there in that it indicates what the evil is and gives us an abhorrence of it. So I'm not here to eliminate suffering per se. I'm here to avoid the causes of suffering in a legitimate way, not simply to be anaesthetized against it, but to avoid it by avoiding the cause of suffering. Now you can say the cause of suffering is the um, 
you know, pain, for instance, is the uh, neurons sending us a signal. I don't wish to anaesthetize the signal. In as far as I need the signal to know that something's wrong, I might, having determined what's wrong and having it put right, or find I can't put it right, I might want to remove the pain and then be anaesthetized. But I don't want to exclude suffering from my life. It's incredibly valuable in steering me the way I wish to go and need to go. Thank you, Dad. There is a further misunderstanding that um, the self doesn't exist, and I'm not going to in any sense prioritize it. This is not a facility that we have been given. We are given a sense of self and limitations in the context of our limitations, and we prioritize self. Most religions seem to have come to the conclusion that self is an evil. Not at all. God is has it that we are selfish in the sense of I prioritize myself. Because I am in a situation of limited resources and understanding, I could increase my understanding and behave as if I'm not limited in resources, but be limited in resources, in which case outcomes would be very non-optimal. Given Uncertainty and limited resources. Selfishness is a priority and a blessing. It helps the body survive. It, 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 it focuses a priority that if you don't survive, that's very important. God does not hold you as of no importance. Your friends and family don't hold you as of no importance and value. The ideal, as understood in Buddhism, was at one time, I cannot choose between you and me. They're both equally important to me. Now, the Christian view was, no, I should self-sacrifice myself for your welfare. I do not want my kids to sacrifice themselves for each other. I'm not handicapped in that way, in my creation, that I need this to be the case. You're allowed to prioritize yourself. It's like with your charity. I don't want you to give away the necessities of your living. I want you to give from your surplus. Because you love others that don't have, as you see it, the necessities. Oh, that's beautiful. You are a neighbor to him in need. That's all I ask of you. That's well, I don't even ask it of you, of course. But that's lovely if that's how you do it. But I do not want you to sacrifice yourself for others. Certainly you're willing to give of your surplus, where it's a joy to you to do so. And if it is a joy for you to do so, well, that's lovely. And if it isn't, I'm not putting it on you. to value the body I've given you life and opportunity to enter eternal life this opportunity in the classroom to train for a heavenly existence I don't want you to treat that with contempt as if it's of no value I want you to treat it as one of the great treasures I've given you and even your, in your childish understanding the greatest treasure I've given you now you take care lovey you get to the edge of the pavement, you stop and you look and you listen. You don't just rush in to rescue the dog or your, your little sister. You pause. I'm as concerned about your welfare as hers. Do you understand? You are both a treasure to me. And if I lose both of you, I'm doubly hurt. Do you know that, love? Good on you. So, 
help where you can and where you can't, don't do it, love. Don't risk me losing both of you, please. That's not your job. I do that. And I take responsibility where that goes wrong. Bless you. Thank you, Dad. You see, the Jesus story tells you you're loved. He's your dad. He's not just this awesome, fearful God. <laughs> He's not even the fearful bit, not to you. He's dad. I know he loves me. That's he's, he's a perfect dad. He values you. Do you think he wants you not to value your life? Oh my goodness. How am I going to protect you if you're like that? <laughs> I've blessed you with self-interest. Of course, I don't want some narrow view of self that ends up only interested in yourself. I want you to love one another. And you know that, don't you? And you do. And that just brings me endless joy. Bless you. Thank you, Dad. Isn't it interesting? As far as I know, the Muslim religion is the only one that realizes you're to give out of your surplus not out of your necessities. You have a priority yourself and then your family. And then, you know, those you love. You're limited in resources. But if you still have surplus, yes, you use it to best advantage, to best gain. Not in some self-centered way. I mean, you're not out to just, you know, heap pleasures upon yourself. Because you care for others. Why? Don't know, you just do. You don't want anyone to suffer. Their needs do bear on you. Not equally with yours. You couldn't live with that. There's a vast world of need out there. You'd be swamped. I don't want you to be swamped. I want you to give you life, and more abundantly, and eternal life. And eternal life is a fellowship, and you need to be prepared for it. And you are preparing yourself for it. And I certainly want your survival in the classroom, else you don't get the lesson, and you don't get there. And I want you to get there. <laughs> Very much. Because I love you. You're my kids. And yes, you know they're all my kids. But I haven't asked you to sacrifice. I don't put that on you. I don't stand in front of you and say, do this, lay down your life for this person. And if you don't, I don't then appear in front of you and say, you should have done this. <laughs> child and I love you and I'm so glad you love me it makes it all so worthwhile bless you